Okay, the second half of 10.8 is curvature. Curvature is defined as kappa, which is equal to dt ds, where s is the arc length parameter of the given curve um, r of t. So r of t has arc length parameter s, and t is the unit tangent vector at a given point lowercase t. So that's the basic definition of it. It's not as useful as a theorem that follows below in terms of calculating this, um, or the derivation at least. Uh, this formula here is what we're primarily going to use to cal calculate the curvature. And there are some other formulas we'll see subsequently as well. Um, but via the chain rule, we can turn this expression into this expression. So the details of, of that textbook can help you out. Now, um, recall that the unit tangent vector is r prime of t over the magnitude of r prime of t. So really it's not much different than a unit vector, it's just now involving functions. So using this, it's just a matter of implementing the formula as we have it. Uh, the first example says, asks us to show that the curvature of a circle of radius two has constant curvature of one half. Okay, so to start this, we parameterize a circle and that's a circle of radius two. Two cosine t, two sine t. We want it parameterized in two dimensions. Uh, because we need the vector form of it in order to calculate the curvature. Next, we'll need r prime of t for the formula. So this is the calculation for r prime of t. Then the magnitude of r prime of t, squaring both of the x and y components, taking the square root of that, and through a Pythagorean identity, we end up with 2 at the end of this. Moving on from there, we have the unit tangent vector that we need to calculate next. And that is, of course, r prime of t over, so here's r prime of t divided by the magnitude of r prime of t. The magnitude is two, so this is multiplied by one half. One half and the factors of two at each component cancel out. We have negative, cos, or negative cosine t, negative sine t. The magnitude of that vector it's cosine squared t plus sine squared t, square root of that, and that's one. Okay, so now we've got t prime of t, r prime of t, putting this together for kappa below, is just going to leave us with one over two. So our curvature is constant curvature, one half. So to imagine what this really is telling us, um, it, Constant curvature would be the situation where you're driving a car, perhaps you're in a big open parking lot, and you just turn the wheel slightly to one side and you hold it exactly there. If you don't move the steering wheel and you just drive forward, imagine what the car is going to do. It should carry out a perfect circle, more or less, um, because you're holding that curvature constant. Okay, so that's an idea of what this curvature measures. You can also think about if you fix the wheel center, it just goes straight without letting the wheel deviate at all. This is a zero curvature and that would be a line. Good. Anything else is a little bit more eccentric and harder to imagine. Now, um, some more formulas to calculate this. We've got a cross product formula with R prime and, and R double prime at the top here. This can be a useful formula at times. Um, and we also have one to calculate it from a Cartesian coordinate in a planar curve. So y equals f of x, we can calculate the curvature of such a curve with a, a formula there. So example 8.5 below says find the curvature of r of t, which is t squared natural log t natural log t at the point 0, 0.1100. 1, 0, 0. So we just need to realize when 1.00 0, 0 occurs. Well, when t is equal to one, we have one, natural log of one is zero, natural log of one is zero. So we can immediately point out, before we get too far down the road here, that this one is when t is equal to one. So now we know what values of this function to plug in. Before we get there though, we're gonna to have to handle this a little bit more cleanly. Um, R prime of t, 
taking the derivative of the given function gives us this, r double prime, similarly, more power rules and we get r double prime of t here. So furthermore, we're gonna need r prime cross r double prime of one. We can plug that in now if we'd like to just simplify the, the cross product vector calculations. Doing that, we get r prime of one, r double prime of one. Carrying out the cross product, we have a vector zero, four, negative four. Okay, we can use this, that'll be our numerator. We'll take the magnitude of that vector in kappa and we see that here down below, just writing the formula down here. Okay, and below this is r prime of one cubed, magnitude cubed, so this is r prime of one, um, with the, taking the magnitude of it, and then cubing the magnitude, okay? So that adds up to six to the three halves on the denominator. In the numerator, we have zero squared plus four squared plus four squared. Simplifying this arithmetically, we end up with this answer here, four root two over root 216. We could simplify some of these things if we like. That could be 4 over root 108 if we'd like, um, but it's not particularly important to do that. We have the value we need and that's good enough. Now, find the curvature of the function y equals 2x cubed for a general point on the curve and also at x equals 0. Okay, we're given a planar curve y equals f of x, so let's just use the formula that makes the most sense. Um, the function that involves, or the curvature formula that involves f prime and f double prime. So we'll need a few derivatives. These are taken here. Then we plug these into the formula, taking the magnitude of f double prime of six, that's here, at the bottom. Similarly, one plus f prime, which is six x squared, all of that to the three halves. And not much to simplify here other than squaring out 6x squared. We get 36x squared. So that concludes the general point on the curve. And now the curvature at x equals one is really just a matter of evaluating the function kappa of x at x equals one. That leaves us with six over 37 to the three halves. Again, that's about as simple as that needs to be. Remember this is an exact answer. Decimals are not exact answers, so just keep that in mind. Uh, something involving radicals and fractional powers and, and fractions themselves is an exact answer, whereas a decimal is not. So that's curvature, and that concludes 10.8.